in teaser two video for the steps to the discovery of electro nuclear collapse edition two kickstarter for dr taka akimatsumoto's book i referred to this diagram here being able to be updated with much higher fidelity in this 1995 paper extraordinary traces produced during pulsed discharges in water well in this paper he talks about the reactions being observed using a system of micro telescope and vtr a video recorder and nuclear emulsions they were alternately located outside of the window outside the window where the cell was located such that the window was vertical pictures from the micro telescope 10 to 100 times amplification were recorded on the vtr this is absolutely groundbreaking approach using effectively a microscope attached to a vtr along with nuclear emulsions to establish what was going on in this process and in this set of images here these are frames taken from the video of the vtr and even with screen grabs the originals show much more information here than you can see here you have some sort of color spectral information going on to a degree the explosions they're arranged in a, a crossways rather than up uh, down here so uh, this will be a and b this is a and b but you can see a lot more clarity in the explosion going on here and the shock wave than you can see in this one in this image here you can see a lot more fidelity in this plate behind and in the field of view of the microscope sort of objective that is viewing this overall event and most importantly you can see that the electrode at the end actually has an orange red glow now this is the highest fidelity we have to date but i believe that we'll be able to even improve upon this by actually capturing from the video recording that we have of this um, experiment and so we have a huge improvement in understanding what's going on from the original materials and that isn't the only one where we have the ability to get a much greater understanding in this paper experiments of one point cold fusion a very seminal paper of dr matsumoto's from april 26 1993 when we scroll down there are these marks that he observed in his witness materials here and if for instance we look at this one though he didn't mention it of course with my experience I can see a pair here, 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 I can see a pair here. And it can kind of, you know, get some overall spatial relationship with what's going on. But when you actually look at the color photographs, it's incredible the amount of extra information we will be able to learn about what is going on in this experiment so if i look here firstly you can see much more detail around the boundaries you can obviously see this color the yellow in the background the green uh, and the reds going on in this but it becomes much more clear that this is a ring that this is a ring potentially that this is potentially a broken ring this is maybe a broken ring so you can imagine these large rings coming together to form a much larger cluster potentially and these are much clearer bounded here and overlaid you can see that this is overlaid because and this is overlaid but it's when you zoom in and we can zoom in because of this high resolution okay you can start to see for instance here that this torus here which is 
on the boundary here in this image here and this torus which are overlaying you can see on the boundary there are smaller tori it would appear these tori here tori here potentially and so I believe we're going to be able to learn a lot more than even Matsumoto was able to share by studying the extra detail that is available in these images that we have been able to capture from his resources. And another example from this paper, a little bit further on, we can see here what he calls itonic hydrogen clusters with 70 volts. And this is the breakup of that structure. But here is what we can see in the color capture. So you get a much better separation between these kind of black blobs here, this black blob here, this black blob here, this fragment over here, and then these little pieces. And then it becomes much clearer when you zoom into this, what is going on? Because you can see that in this case, there's sort of a side where nothing comes out. And then from the other side, the far side in this case, there's all of these fibers coming out. All of these structures coming out. Again, they're all coming from one side. They're all coming from the back side of this piece. Here. You can see here, it's, at, it's come down here, but it's got this material that's come out of it. It's got this material that's come out of it. Over here, it's got this material that's come out of it. Now, are these itonic clusters, as he says, or um, are these carbon fibers? I don't know, but we're going to learn a lot more. Now, even though we have this beautiful image captured from his composites, and if I zoom in, you can see all this detail there is this artifact here these little round spots which are due to the photo paper having these little dimples all over it and so hopefully we can work with the negatives and reproduce this composite and I believe that we're going to be able to do that because we've done it in other cases we can reproduce this composite image that he made but without the distraction of this artifact caused by the printer paper on which it was printed. So with this and the extra detail that we can see in these kind of images we're going to be able to look into his experiments in a way that wasn't even available to him 